Hey guys, I'm Jane Lou, the founder and CEO of Shopo. So this is part three of a business series where I talk about my entrepreneurial journey so far. So part one is about how I first entered this world of entrepreneurship and how I started my first business, how that failed, and the five major lessons that I had learned from it. And part two is about how I started this business, um, which is now a $30 million business with no money at all. Actually, I was $60,000 in debt. And part three, this, is about some of the major obstacles that we came across um, as a startup for Shopo and how we overcame it. So Shopo started in September 2010 as an online store and then two months later, we opened our first bricks and mortar store in Broadway in Sydney. And so, um, side note, we are purely online now, but at one point we had three stores in Sydney's Broadway, CBD and Bondi. So this is the first time I had worked in the online store and it was my own. So my days would start with me going to our suppliers and picking up stock so that I could um, fulfill online orders and to restock the store because we were still working on consignment at the time. Then I'd go into the store and in between helping out customers, I was packing the online orders and doing the online customer inquiries and then when I come home, I'd work on the marketing and website product uploads. The days were long. But I didn't care, I loved it. Eight months into the business, we had a first major win. So this Facebook hack I came up with, we started making up to $22,000 a month. And so I got the idea when I was watching America's Next Top Model um, one night, by myself with a glass of wine in my tracky jacks on the couch. And um, I just thought, hey, you know, like why don't we do this? But on our Facebook, this modeling competition, and we could just ask all of our followers to enter and and they did they entered themselves they would create some of them will create um, Facebook events and groups to ask their friends to vote for them but then their friends would in turn enter themselves and do the same which created this massive ripple effect so within the space of a month we went from 3,000 followers to 20,000 followers and it cost us nothing and this is back when 20,000 seriously a lot of followers and so it gave us this little company ran by someone who didn't really know what they were doing so much credibility. So after we did this competition, heaps of other companies did it too. But I think being the first to do, to do it gave us this massive competitive advantage to the other stores in the market. So a few months from there, animosity decided to grow between my business partner and I. So I was doing all the work because she had her own um, business already and that was much more successful that she was busy working on. And this is um, absolutely what we informally originally agreed on. Um, and I knew this is what I would sign up for originally because I was just so desperate at the time to start a business and I didn't have the confidence to do it by myself. But so, Regardless of that, after a few months of it, well, over a year of it, um, you know, I was getting burnt out and the ill feeling started to grow more and more and, you know, it started to just really drive a wedge between us. The next stage of the business is probably one of the biggest hurdles that many entrepreneurs need to overcome, the lull. You've hassled all of your friends in your network to try your products, to like your Facebook page, to go to your events, and you've pulled out all the stops and all of the initial marketing ideas that you've had and the business just plateaus. It stops growing and you don't know what to do next. Or in my case, sales started dropping significantly. So we are making good money. I mean, in December 2011, we only made $5,000 that month. And as I say in Australia, in the retail trade, that your summer Christmas trade is meant to tie you over for the rest of the year, especially during your quieter winter months. So, to make $5,000 in December, which is only two online orders a day, was just terrible. And on top of that, we had this casual staff claim unfair dismissal on us. I mean, she had no leg to stand on, but we still had to go into fair trading. And then our Broadway store got broken into in the middle of the night, twice. And when I was working in the store by myself, this giant rat came in and was just running around every, everywhere. And I swear to God, that's way more traumatic than it sounds. I'm serious. So it was just an absolute shit fight and it just seemed like things just kept getting worse and worse for us. So it was at that point that my business partner decided to tap out of the business and rightly so. I mean, Show Pony at that time was a sinking ship. And so we amicably went our own ways 
But little did I know, all those misfortunes and mishaps were blessings in disguise and were catalysts for a change. January 3rd, 2012. That is a historic day for me. I mean, that was the day the show Pony became all mine. But it didn't take long for the excitement to wear off because, I mean, show pony was still failing at the time. It was on the verge of going out of business. We were on less than two orders a day. And if I had failed then, all of the show pony and fat boy failure would have attributed to me. And this is the first time I was in business by myself. So shit got real, real fast. Sorry, I'm losing the light here. But anyway, so once I took over, I got busy into it. So I removed the shipping charge, I optimized Facebook ads, started running Google AdWords, um, expanded on inventory and made better buying decisions, provided impeccable customer service, improved the packaging, um, made more frequent social media posts and started doing my own PR. So it wasn't any one thing in particular, because I was doing, but rather I was doing a million things at once, but sales just, kept growing, um, we were doubling, more than doubling month on month. We went from that $5,000 um, in December to $9,000 the following January, and then $40,000 the next month, then $75,000, then $140,000, and so on. So I jumped to the next major challenge we had to face, and that was our name. So when we first came up with the name Show Pony, I thought that it was such a perfect name for a store that, at the time, predominantly sold fun party dresses. Plus, it was really catchy. But then, through the magic of social media, we started selling more and more internationally. Good problem to have, I know. But because show pony is such a common term of phrase, there were show pony stores all over the world. Irony here is that with Five Boy Group, my first business, um, is that we invested all this money into the business without trying it and testing it first. So then with show pony, I decided not to go all in before testing it first, which meant that I didn't do a bunch of the admin things like trademarking before um, knowing that the business was going to work because I didn't. And so when the business took off, it was kind of too late. I mean, hindsight's a beautiful thing, right? So I guess the point is, you never know until you make the mistake. And I've really gone from one extreme to the other. But I still think that in this case, it was better off to have traded off an annoying rebrand to having agility and speed to market. Back to the story. When we realized we couldn't use the name anymore, I was so disheartened by this. I mean, I thought that our name and our brand was all that we had really built up by this stage and it was our main asset. So, I mean, I was seriously so disheartened. What actually helped me get through this was when my boyfriend's dad said to me, you know, if you want to achieve longevity in business, you've got to be prepared to change and evolve. This is just one roadblock amongst many that you'll face. I know it seems obvious now, and it was just his nice way of saying, hun the F up, and get over it, that's business. But it actually really helped me shift my thinking and refocus on planning for the next move. So the next three months uh, we spent brainstorming names. Alex, our general manager and I, came up with so many names. And some of them, sorry, most of them were terrible. Um, let me just tell you some of the shortlisted ones to give you an indication of how bad the truly bad ones were. But Alex's favorite was Dizzy Thrills. I mean, what the? And then my favorite was Hey Pretty. And the one that we actually almost went with, we actually got it trademarked, we got the URL um, and everything, was Outfit Crush. We had at outfitcrush.com. Somehow, miraculously, we circled back to, why don't we just drop the NY and call it Shopo? I mean, we love the name now, but it definitely seemed really weird at the time. But then we just thought how some of our favorite bands had really weird names. So we just thought, let's just go for it. Ain't hey, nobody <laughs> got time for the NY. And now, looking back with hindsight, it was such a great thing to happen to us. Not only for trademark reasons, and the fact that we have a unique .com URL and a unique Insta handle, but because a name like Showpony would have limited us to a certain category or demographic and wouldn't have allowed us to grow and evolve like Shopo has. <laughs> I know I've spent a lot of time talking about the early years of the business, but that's when it's the hardest. I didn't have the experience, the confidence, the people around me like I have now. Those were the formative years that really shaped the business and myself as a businesswoman. See you in part four. I'll be talking about how I grew this business from a startup to one that makes over $30 million in revenue.